Welcome to video three in the series titled Receiving HF Digital Signals, FL Message Setup for Amron Ops. In this video, we'll walk you through setting up FL Message, the fast light companion program which works with FL Digi. If you haven't done so already, be sure to go back and watch the first and second videos, Receiving HF Digital Signals, even if you're not a ham operator, and FL Digi Setup for Amron operations. This series of videos is intended to provide building blocks, one built upon the other. So, by now, you should have FL Message downloaded and installed. Also, you should have the custom forms downloaded and unzipped somewhere on your computer where you can easily access them. We'll walk you through importing and using them. And like the last video, we'll include a test message at the end for you to practice so you can be sure that everything is working properly. You might be asking, why FL Message? What does it do? As explained previously, FL Message is a program for sending or receiving pre-formatted forms. FL Digi by itself is a way for a station to send text to one or multiple stations simultaneously. It can work as a keyboard to keyboard type of chat program, for example. Hey Bob, how are things over there? Hey Jim, good to see you, doing good, chickens started laying eggs again. However, when passing actual situation reports, status reports, formal requests for equipment, supplies or personnel, distributing news and intelligence reports, or daily executive summaries, they need to be more organized and formatted in a consistent, easy to read manner. Imagine trying to read your local newspaper if it was all mashed together like this. And this is just one report. Imagine having to read through 20 of them. Also, FL Message organizes each piece of message traffic into a folder as a file for easier searching, retrieval, reading, printing, and sending to others using digital modes over radio. You could send an individual file as an email attachment. As a side note, did you know ham operators can send emails to each other over radio? No internet, no commercial power, no problem. But that's a topic for a much later video. So let's get your FL message set up. Double click the FL message icon that should be on your desktop. You'll be prompted to set it up if this is a fresh new installation on your computer. When you get to a dialog that asks, if you want to use expert mode, be sure to select it. When you open FL Message each time, you want it to look like this. If you somehow missed the expert mode in the setup, when you open FL Message, it will look like this. But it's easy to change. Click on Tools, and then from the drop down menu, select Expert Dialog. This will open up the full size FL Message window. To avoid having to do this every time, go into the larger FL message window and click on the config tab, then select user interface at the bottom of the drop down menu. Then check the box that reads user interface equals expert. Then exit out of the smaller FL message window and it will close the whole FL message application. You're all set. From now on, all you have to do is double click on the desktop icon and it will display the expert user interface version of FL message whenever you open the application. Setup is super simple. Click on the config tab and add your call sign or if you're not licensed, your Amron call sign. For date and time, select the more logical sequence of year, month, day, and then Zulu or UTC time. Under the Files tab, check the boxes labeled Call Sign and Serial Number. Change the date time to Zulu or UTC, and the number field can start off with one, that's fine. You can close that window. Next, let's import your custom Amron HTML files that you previously downloaded and unzipped. Mine are in my downloads folder, but yours might be in a different place, depending on what you've set up as a designated folder for your downloads. You're going to copy 
and paste the HTML files from your unzipped forms folder into your FL message custom forms folder. Be sure your FL message program is open because I'm going to show you the fastest and simplest way to find your NBEMS folder and subfolders. So highlight and copy your custom forms and then in FL message, click on the file tab, then the folders tab in the dropdown. Double click the custom folder and then right click in the field or use your keyboard keys, control V and paste the forms into your custom folder. There they are. Custom forms are listed with a .k2s file extension. So whenever you receive Amron radio traffic over the air, where a custom form is used to create the report, your FL message program will recognize the .k2s file extension and use the appropriate form to open and display the message traffic that you've received. In your custom forms folder, you should now have the Amron blank form, the sit rep or situation report form, spot rep, and stat rep, the status report forms. As of 2024, version 5.0 are the most current forms in use by Amron operators. You'll see that in the file name of each form. As you explore the forms drop down menu, you'll also notice other categories of forms available, including some organizations you may recognize. Civil Air Patrol, for example, the Military Auxiliary Radio Service, and Red Cross. However, the most common forms you may see used in your local area or your state are used by the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, or ARIES, which commonly use ICS forms. This is from the Incident Command System, which is standardized nationwide. For example, the ICS-213 is probably the most common general radio message form. You might see that in the future. Another really helpful form the developers have added is the HAM Forms Net Log. It's a great way to keep a radio activity log to keep track of who you've made contact with and when and what traffic was sent or received. Future videos will be released covering each form that Amron uses, when, why, and how to use each one when creating a report or a message. But in this video series, the focus is on stations receiving radio traffic from the nets, even if you can't transmit or may not even be licensed. If you recall in the last video, FL Digi setup for Amron operations one of the settings addressed NBEMS, which tells FL Digi to open certain traffic when detected in FL Message. Now, let's deal with the biggest head scratcher for new FL Digi FL Message users. Whether you fill out a form and save it, or simply receive a message in an FL Message form, where does it go? Super easy. It's in your message folder. Whether you save a form you filled out or if you've received a message, in your FL message program, click File, then Folders, then ICS, then Messages. Remember ICS. That's the Incident Command System. This is where most newer folks get hung up. They can't remember the ICS part of their file path. This perplexed many of us when we first began using FL message. You can also get to those folders using the file menu in FL Digi. Click File, then Folders, then either the NBEMS messages or FL Message messages. Either one will take you to the same place in the version of FL Digi I'm using for this demonstration. To read a message you've previously received, go to your File tab, then click Open, and it will take you directly to the Messages folder. Double click on the file you want to open and read. This is in its raw text format. To display the form and the data in a more readable and printable format, click on the Edit Form tab if you need to edit it, or View the Form, which is the safest option if you're not the author of that report. Clicking on the View Form will open it in your default internet browser, even if you're grid down and not connected to the internet. From there, you can read it, 
or print it for distribution to your local group or community leadership. Keep in mind, however, that it will also print the instructions. So if it's a short report, you may want to adjust your printer settings to only print page one of the document. Although you can open FL Message as a standalone program, such as when you're filling out a report or reading traffic you've received, it's always a good habit to also open FL Digi first. Just develop the habit of opening FL Digi first and then FL Message. The reason is that FL Message is what captures or sends the audio. If you only have FL Message open when receiving a message signal, Whatever was sent won't be captured because that's the role that FL Digi plays. FL Message only displays captured data in the preformatted forms and saves them. This is especially true for FLAMP, which we'll be covering in the next video. It will not function without FL Digi being first opened. You now have everything you need to receive fast light messages using FL Message forms over the air. Remember, these are only basic, fundamental setup settings for making use of received signals. There's more involved with sending, and there are a lot more features built into these programs, but these are the basics to get you functional. Stay tuned for another test message. Just like on the nets over the radio, the transmission will begin in Contestia 4250. A mode change to MFSK32 will be sent, followed by the test FL message traffic, and then another mode change back to Contestia once the traffic is sent. Have fun. Subscribe, like, and share if you found this video helpful, and keep checking back for the next video covering FLAMP. FLAMP is an important tool in the toolbox and plays a very important role in the Amron Communications plan. You'll definitely want to have it set up. 73 everyone and God bless the Republic. Now get your comms up.